Episode 7. A cat cannot be made deputy without having mentored at least one apprentice. Our skills and our knowledge will live forever, thanks to our mentors, who teach the next generation of clan cats the way of the warrior. But it took a great leader to see that it was not only the apprentice who gained valuable knowledge from, his me from the mentor. Being entrusted with an apprentice teaches the mentor how to lead and gain loyalty and respect. But what is a deputy or leader if not a mentor to the whole clan? Second in command. Star Clan, hear me as I make my choice. Acorn Tail will be the new deputy of Wing Clan. Feather Star stretched out and rest her, rested her muzzle lightly on top of Acorn Tail's head. Acorn Tail closed his eyes, swallowing his grief for Pebblefur, the cat who had once been his mentor, and whose death from a strange, lump, agonizing lump in his belly had shocked the clan. Acorn Tail! Acorn Tail! called the cats behind him. But no. But to Acorn Tail they sounded flat and disappointed. It was obvious that they didn't want they didn't want him to be their deputy. Good luck, Acorn Tail, murmured a voice in his ear. It was Morning Cloud, the dark grey she cat who had made no secret of her surprise when Acorn Tail was picked for deputy instead of her. Thanks, Acorn Tail meowed behind her. He could see her apprentice Quickpaw glaring at him. His pale ginger face screwed up with indignation. Acorn Tail wondered if all young cats rewarded their mentors with such fierce loyalty. He hadn't yet had an apprentice of his own, so he didn't know what it would be like to train a new warrior and to watch him or her develop from a bumbling, t bumbling kit to strong, skillful fighting cat. Morning Cloud headed back to Quick, uh, Quick Paw, and Acorn Tail heard the young cat hiss. It should have been you! The she-cat quieted him with a flick of her tail. Maybe one day, she murmured softly. Acorn Tail, we need to sort out the patrols for today, Featherstar prompted. Her tone was almost apologetic, as if she didn't want to remind him of his duties. Oh, yes, yes, of course, Acorn Tail stammered. Gorse Claws, Sheep Tail, and Clover Splash, you go on a hunting patrol. Clover Splash, a slightly built dark brown she-cat, and with a white uh, flash on her nose, shaped exactly like a clover leaf, stopped him. We went on a hunting patrol this morning. We should have, uh, we should have a training session with our apprentices now. Acorn Tail, felt, Acorn Tail felt as if the three apprentices attached to these warriors were looking at him with a mixture of scorn and pity. He ducked his head. Oh, uh, yes, of course, training. Well, maybe you could take the evening hunting patrol. Sure, mewed Thistlepaw, Sheeptail's apprentice. We're always in the mood for chasing rabbits all over the place after fighting all afternoon. Acorn's fur, Acorn Tail's fur prickled with embarrassment. Why didn't he think of that? Why was he being such a flea brain? Right, okay, Morning Cloud, could you and Quick Paw do a hunting patrol instead? Morning Cloud put her head on one side on her own. She questions, questioned, uh, no, I'll come with you, Acorn Tail decided hastily. He glanced at Feather Star, who gave a quick, who gave a quick tiny nod. Acorn Tail, Acorn Tail felt lower than a worm's belly. Why did Featherstar make me her deputy when I'm so useless? You'll do fine, Acorn Tail, Featherstar told him. She sounded tired and strained, and Acorn Tail realized how much she mu must still be grieving for Pebblefur, who had died only three season sunrises ago. They were in her den, a shallow scoop in the sandy earth, shielded by a wall of gorse. Some hide just passed, and the hunting patrol was due to leave. Is running well at the moment. You'll catch plenty with Morning Cloud and Quick Paw. Acorn Tail heard the dismay on her tone. He backed out of the den. Morning Cloud and Quick Paw were waiting for him in the center of the camp. Quick Paw still looked hostile, but the she cat's expression was impossible to read. Morning Cloud just nodded and let Acorn Tail lead the way up the slope and out into onto the moor. Acorn Tail quickly detected the musky tang rabbit and heard a laugh. For the first time since being made deputy, he felt sure of what he was doing, confident in the swiftness of his paws and the prospect of, be of a good piece of fresh kill for the clan. The rabbit tried to outrun him, but he drew steadily alongside, pounced from running full speed, and brought it down with a muffled snap of neck bones. He lifted his head and looked around. A morning cloud was racing after a young rabbit, her tail bouncing as she tore across the warm grass, and Quickpaw was sniffing the ground as if he had picked up the scent of a plover plover's nest. Eggs laid in a scoop of earth were a rare, were a rare treat for the cats, as plovers defended their unhatched young fiercely. 
But Quickpaw already had a reputation not just for tracking the nests, but for carrying the eggs undamaged back to the camp. Tucked under his chin, the acorn tail felt a, a little pebble of worry in his stomach dissolve. His clan was the best by far, and it was an honor to be their deputy. He stiffened. There was another sense on the air. Not rabbit or freshly laid egg, eggs, but feline. The breeze was carrying it from the direction of four trees in the border with ThunderClan. What did those mangy t uh, tree dwellers want now? They were far too slow to, and fat to catch WindClan's prey, so why would they even try? His fur bristling, Acorn Tail shoved the rabbit under a gorse bush and trotted toward the border. The scent grew stronger. As he crested a, a rise close to the edge of WindClan territory, he saw three ThunderClan cats walking along the border, barely a whisker length from trespassing. Did you, uh, did you want something? he growled. The biggest ThunderClan cat shook his head. Just doing a patrol, he replied in differently. Acorn Tail looked closer. The smallest cat, which looked like an apprentice, had a tuft of dusky brown dusky brown fur stuck on his nose. There was only one type of prey that had fur like that. Have you been stealing rabbits? Acorn Tail hissed. The apprentice's eyes stretched wide in guilty horror. Acorn Tail was sure, but the big warrior just curled his lip. As if we'd, ta we'd waste our energy chasing your scrawny prey. Acorn Tail opened his jaws. He could clearly taste the scent of fresh killed rabbit clinging to these cats. Before he could say anything, Morning Clown's quick paw hurtled up from farther along the border. We found a dead rabbit, Quickpaw panted, with Thunderclan's scent on it, Morning Cloud added. She skidded to a stop and narrowed her eyes to the rival patrol. Corntail flattened his ears. So you did steal our prey. It was dead already, already, growled the growled the Thunderclan warrior. You know better than to waste good fresh kill on like ye, unlike your clan. It did look old and did smelled funny, Quickpaw meowed before Corntail could silence him. It could have been dead for days. Yuck, you must you just ate crow food. That's not the point, Acorn Tail hissed. What kind of deputy lets a first wild patrol he meets get away with trespassing and theft? These cats have stolen our prey. They must be taught a lesson. When clan when clan attack He sprang at the big at the big thunderclown warrior, claws unsheathed. To his surprise the warrior didn't try to jump away or Fight back. Instead, he stared past Acorn Tail with a glimmer of amusement. In his eyes, Ac in his eyes, Acorn Tail fed it to the ground and looked over his shoulder. Morning Cloud and Quickpaw were standing uh, close together, watching him. Attack! Yelled or Acorn Tail. Don't be such a mouse brain, Morning Cloud retorted. And I'm not putting my apprentice in danger for the sake of crow food. If they want to eat rotten prey, that'll give them a bellyache. That's up to them. But they trespass. Acorn Tail protested, starting to feel like feel like uh, the day w couldn't get any worse. Actually, we didn't, the other th Thunderclan warrior put in helpfully. The rabbit was on our side of the border. Acorn Tail looked questioningly at Morning Cloud. She nodded. Why didn't you tell me, Acorn Tail demanded. We were going to, Morning Cloud replied. You didn't give us a chance, and now I think you'll find your t trespassing in our territory. The first Thunderclan warrior pointed out. Acorn Tail walked swiftly back across the border. Morning Cloud, quick paw. Morning Cloud, quick paw, we're going back to the camp, he announced. Featherstar needs to be told that a rabbit has died on ThunderClan's territory. Morning Cloud looked vainly surprised, but to his relief, she didn't argue, which means it belonged to us anyway, called the ThunderClan warriors. They headed back to the, back up the hill. You should pick your battles more carefully. I didn't know enough to be a deputy, Acorn Tail thought miserably. I'm going to tell Fe Featherstar I can do this. You've made a mistake. You'll have to choose another cat to be deputy. Featherstar regarded regarded him for um, from her nest, her blue eyes glowing in the half light behind the gorse bushes. And you became an apprentice. Did you know all the fighting moves and how to hunt prey? Of course not, Acorn Tail replied, puzzled. And when you became a warrior, did you know how to lead patrols, how to find the best places to hunt, and where our rivals were most likely to try to cross our border? Acorn Tail shook his head. Then why do you expect to know everything about being a deputy on your very first day? Every cat knows you have things to learn, but once you have, you'll be as good as pebble fur. Never. Think back to when you were an apprentice, Featherstar went on. Remember what it was like to learn new things every day, knowing they would all lead to making you a warrior of WindClan? But that was different, Acorn Tail argued. I didn't have responsibility for the whole clan then. 
And you don't now, the star pointed out. I'm still the leader, she put her head to one side. Why do you feel that you're not worthy of giving orders to your climates, Acorn Tail? Because I don't know how to. Look at what happened today. Morning Cloud would never have given the order to attack. She would have found out all the information first, and then made sure that her apprentice, her apprentice wasn't in danger if a fight started. She'd make a much better deputy than me. But I chose you, Feather Star meowed. She was silent for a while, and Acorn Tail tried not to fidget. And then she lifted her head and looked straight at him. I'm sorry, I should have given you an apprentice first. You would have gotten used to giving orders, and you would understand how pr protective mentors feel about sending young cats into battle. She sounded so flat and defeated that Acorn Tail felt, felt a rush of concern for her. She had lost her last deputy, now making her life even more difficult. It's not too late, he mailed firmly. Give me an apprentice now and I can learn. Cherry Feather's kits are nearly six mo moons old. Let me have Prickle Kit. Feather Star held his gaze. If I do that, will you stay as my deputy? Acorn Tail nodded. I'll be the best deputy I can be. Pebble Fur would have wanted me to do that. And you'll be as good as good a mentor to your apprentice as he was to you. Feather Star assured him she went on. I think I'll suggest an addition to the warrior code at the next gathering, that a warrior cannot be made deputy unless he has had an apprentice. Acorn Tail winced, and she added quickly, Not because I regret choosing you, Acorn Tail, but because you're right. Training an apprentice teaches a cat how to give orders, how to protect. The less experienced fighters establish bonds of loyalty that can survive the worst battles. <sighs> now go sort out the Dawn Patrols for tomorrow, and then you might like to visit the nursery to see how your future apprentice is faring.